brethren, I pray you sing a new song. Sing praise in the assembly of the righteous. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let the high praise of God be on the mouths of the saints and a two-edged sword in their hands to execute vengeance on the demonic nations and punishments on those peoples to bind their kings with chains. Dishonor have all his saints. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Sing to him a new song. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to the Most High God, Jehovah, by Hashem of Mashiach, Yahushua. This is um, Brother Aharon, back with the Sons of Jacob. And today's lesson is going to be a quick, quick little breakdown on how to be watchful. Because we got to watch for unclean spirits, and we got to watch for clean spirits. You know, if it's a clean spirit, you want to dwell with that. You want to, you want to, you know, sup with that spirit and let it take you. You know, you want to learn from it. But if it's an unclean spirit, you, you want to flee from that. You want to get away from that as quickly as possible. Let me get this first precept. This is 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 8. It says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. It says, Be vi vigilant. You're supposed to be watching. You're supposed to um be able to discern what's going on in this world. This world is not meant for you. To, to be an upright man or an upright woman. It's not meant for you to, to, to be bold and to have wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. It's not meant for you to have that. This world wants you to fall. This world wants you to die in your, um, in your unfaithfulness. It wants you to die in the lack of your wisdom. That's what this world wants you to do. But we can't do that. We have to watch and understand what's going on like social media, you got to understand that it's a certain spirit on social media. It's certain demons on there. They put certain demons on there just to throw you out of the spirit or just to get you to get your mind off of meditating on the most high or meditating on the scriptures. Because if you believe that we um, um, setting seeds and spreading seeds, and, you know, putting down seeds and um, and righteous, you best believe that they putting down seeds, too. They sowing seeds just as much as we are. So you can't let, you know, you can't let a seed, a wicked seed grow in you. You got to understand what's going on. Because here's how it starts. You may say something, um, say you want to watch a, a wicked TV show. And you know it's wicked. You're like, man, I ain't even, I'm not even, I'm just going to watch 30 minutes of this and I'm going to turn off. Next thing you know, you're you watching it for an hour. And, and it's on the Shabbat. You're supposed to be meditating on the scriptures. You're supposed to be congregating. You're sitting there watching TV. You just bam. Ah, oh, man. You didn't miss the whole Shabbat now. Because you're sitting there watching this wicked TV show. And you knew it was wicked. That it, You just let that, um, that evil seed grow in you. When you know you're supposed to be doing something of the most high. This is 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. In verse 22, it says, abstain from all appearance of evil. It said, abstain from all appearance of evil. All appearance of evil. If you ask any one of my friends, they they know I don't got social media. I can't deal with it. I don't want to deal with it. It's certain spirits on social media. It's certain things set up to throw you out of the spirit. You, you be on social media 15 minutes, then bam, you get back on. Now you're on there for 30. Bam, you get back on. Now you're on there for the whole day. It's that quick. It's that quick. It's set up for you to fail. You can see someone on social media that'll throw you out of the spirit just because you don't got understanding on it. Next thing you know, you're back in a Christian church thinking Gentiles can get saved. Just because you didn't have a certain amount of understanding to deal with it. When that's not even really what it's talking about. You gotta you gotta be mindful and watch. What's trying to attack you? There's certain demons set up to get at you. They know they know how you move. They've been watching you. They know how you move. They know how you set up. They know what you like. They know what you dislike. They're going to come at you with what you like. Maybe you like playing the game. 
they gonna come out with a new game that you ain't never seen before. Like, yeah, man, I'm just, I'm probably finna, you know, play the game for 30, read for an hour. Next thing you know, you want it for 45, you ain't read yet. And then you don't read for the rest of the day. It's certain things like that. that they just planted a seed in you. They just planted a, a, a wicked seed that just grew. It's blossoming. It's blooming. When your righteous seed is supposed to be, supposed to be blooming. That's supposed to be growing. You're supposed to shed light on that. You're supposed to feed that with some water. You haven't gave it. You haven't gave it its daily nutrients. You didn't give it the scriptures, but you gave that wicked seed some some nutrients for the day. You let that grow. You gotta understand this world. This world is not for us. Let me get this. Let me find this one precept real quick. Bear with me. with me Israel I'm kind of going off the spirit this is first John chapter 5 so like it first John chapter 2 and verse 15 it says love not the world neither the things that are in the world if any man love the world the love of the father is not in him that's self-explanatory love not the world neither the things that are in the world your mind is supposed to be on the most high in the kingdom. He said, where your um, where your heart is at, that's where your salak is. Let me not butcher it. Let me get it real quick. This is Matthew 6 and 21. It says, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. You don't want your treasure to be on, on earth here in this world where moth and dust doth corrupt. You want it to be on the most high. You want it to be on spiritual things. That's where your treasure's at, that's where your heart at. Your heart is your mind. That's what you're meditating on. You don't want to be meditating on, man, I can't wait to get home to watch the rest of the TV show. You should be meditating on, man, I can't wait to get home to work on this breakdown. Or, man, I can't wait to get home to read some more. Or, man, I can't wait to get home to sup with my wife and see how she's dealing in the spirit. Or sup with my brothers and see how they're dealing in the spirit. You know? You don't, you, you, you don't want your brothers to be out of the spirit, nor your wife, nor your husband if you're a woman. You don't want them to be out of the spirit. Make sure they're abstaining from all appearance of evil. Likewise yourself. This is verse 16. It says, For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. And we know who's controlling the world right now. It's the spiritual demon Satan. You think you don't got spiritual demons going to and fro looking for you? Trying to figure out what you're doing, what you're into, and what you like. Now, yeah, go watch him. See what he like. We're gonna make this man fall. We're gonna make him. We're gonna make him stumble. Next thing you know, you on social media and you see a scripture you don't get, and you confound you. You didn't consult with the elder. You didn't go to your brother. You. This too. This this is saying what it's saying. You don't know what's going on. You ain't even been in the truth that long, but you sitting there like, nah, this guy, nah, I don't know. It's shaky. It's shaky. I, you offended. Next thing you know, you fall out the truth. You're not dealing with wisdom no more. You're not dealing with the scriptures no more. You ain't Kemet or you in, you know, Islam. Or you somewhere else. Worshiping a damn tree or back in Greek mythology. You can't, you, you, you can't get caught up in this world, man. It's not for you. It says, for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh. The lust of the flesh is going into things that you desire. It's going into pleasurable things. Let's see what some is. Let's see what's pleasurable. Let's find that out real quick. This is Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 24. It says, By faith, when Moses was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. So by faith, Moses, when he was of age, he refused to be called a uh, son of Pharaoh's daughter. He, he didn't want to be known as an Egyptian. He wanted to be known as an as a Israelite. It says, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Sin is pleasurable. That's why a lot of people in the world don't want to get down with the truth because sin is pleasurable. It looks good. It looks tempting. It looks nice. But the grass ain't green on the other side. Let's see. Let's, let's go back. It says, for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh. You want, to, you want things to please your flesh. 
you want to please your flesh. Like, oh, man, I can't wait to go home and look at this or watch this. Or I can't home, wait to go home and feel this way or get high and feel this kind of way because you're trying to please your flesh. Yo, 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 that sin is pleasurable. But that sin can also get you killed, though. It will get you killed. So I feel. Not can, it will. Let me see real quick. Bear with me, Baba Kasha. Let me find this precept. If I can find it. Bear with me, Israel. Baba Kasha, please. Um, this is John chapter 8 and verse 21. This ain't really the one I wanted, but it'll work. It says, Then said Yahweh shall again unto them, I go my way, and ye shall seek me, and shall die in your sins. Whither I go, ye cannot come. It says, You shall die in your sins. You're going to die in your sins if you keep doing the things that please the flesh instead of things that please the, the spirit. It's a perfect balance. It's, you got things that please the flesh. You got things that please the spirit. You got things. You got um, spirits on the left hand side that plant seeds. You got spirits on the right hand side that's trying to plant seeds. It's a perfect balance. You got winning. You got loss. That's just how it go. It ain't you know. It ain't too deep. It's not deep at all. Uh, back at First John two and sixteen, it says, "For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh." And the lust of the eyes and the pride of life. You're not supposed to be prideful. But I'm going to keep going. It says it's not of the Father, but it's of the world. The spiritual demon, Satan, is the one that rules this world. The kind, like I was saying, the earth was given into the hands of the wicked. That's that's the spiritual demon, Satan. So you got to understand that he's he's going out sifting. He's trying to figure out, you know, who's on my team. Yeah, I was already told us you can't serve two masters. Either you're going to get down with the truth and be in the truth wholeheartedly, or you're going to get down with with the world and be down with the world and die with the world. Because if you don't think this world is coming to an end, please believe that it is. You know, I mean, it's just that. This is Second Ezra chapter 8 and verse 1. It says, and he answered me, saying, the Most High hath made this world for many. This world that we're living in right now, he made this world for many. There was many kingdoms that ruled, you know. You got the Persian Medes, Greeks, Romans. Um, I think we had rulership for some for a little point of time. Who else? Um, America, they ruling. Who else? Uh, the Assyrians, Egyptians. This world was made for many. Let's keep reading. It says, but the world to come for few. The world that's after this, when all said is done, the world that that's coming from is for is for few. It's for the people that actually want to deal in the spirit. People that want to be in the spirit. Let me show you how unclean spirits work. Because Yahweh Shah gave us the scoop on how unclean spirits work. This is Matthew chapter 12 and verse 43. It says, when the unclean spirit is going out of a man, he walketh through dry places seeking rest and findeth none then he saith i will return into my house from whence i came out and when he is come he findeth it empty and swept and garnished so an unclean spirit will leave a man body said an unclean spirit is um say say un, say that unclean spirit is um dealing with porn say that's the unclean spirit it says he leaveth his body then he you know walking through the dry places he don't find nothing come back it's empty verse 45 it says, then goeth he and taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. So say that unclean spirit of porn leave out of a man. Then he come back to him. He come back with seven more wicked spirits than the first. So now he coming back with pedophilia. Now he coming back with, you know, the spirit of the peeping Tom. Now he coming back with um, wanting to deal with other men, Sodom, sodomy. Now you're dealing with un, you know, weird lust. Now you're dealing with um, 
sleeping with animals, bestiality. He come back with seven more spirits wicked than the uh, more wicked than him. So the last state of that man is more worse than the first. It's worse or off. You gotta be able to understand and see what's actually going on. If you get rid of a wicked spirit, you gotta understand he might come back with some with some more heat. He might come back with some big bros on him, with some big ox, with some elders, and you gotta be able to fight that off. You gotta be able to understand what's going on. Like I know I was dealing with this in the world, but now, you know, he trying to come back with this. It's some it's this ain't this ain't hitting my spirit. You know, and that's when we refer to the law. See what's in the law. Is it wicked to do such things? Is it off to do such things? That's when you refer to um to these wise sayings, these wise men that we got in the Bible. Did 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 Daniel act in such a way? Did Moses, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, did they act in this kind of way? How did Yahweh Shaw walk? Did he walk with this spirit? Maybe I shouldn't walk with this spirit. That's when you refer to the Bible. That's when you get back to the basics and be like, okay, this is how I need to be moving. I don't need to be moving with this. And that's when you get get rid of them unclean spirits. But the only way, only way to get some, get off some heavy spirits is with fasting. You gotta be able to, you gotta be able to um take a fast every now and then. You can't just not fast and think you're finna get this spirit off you. Let me see real quick. Um. Kind. This is Isaiah chapter 58, and I'm going to get to the point, verse 6. It says, Is not this the fast that I have chosen to loose the bands of wickedness, to undo heavy burdens, and to let the oppressed go free, that ye may break every yoke, that ye may break the yoke and the strongholds and the bands of wickedness off you, that you may get these spirits off you. Sometimes you got to fast and get in the spirit. Because fasting, that afflicts, that afflicts the, um, your flesh. You don't give what your flesh. You don't give your flesh what it want. You don't give it that pleasure. You don't give it that, cause your flesh may lust after food, and he may want that food. But you're not giving your flesh that. You're not letting it have that. Now you're dealing in the spirit. Now you. It's like it. Now you're giving the spirit what it want. You want you giving it. You giving it spiritual food. You giving it that manna. You 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 reading. You understanding more. You unlocking stuff. You have a shot down here suffering with you now. Now you now you really dealing in the spirit. Let me see if I can get a precept for what I just said. Yeah, I'll shot something with you. Con, this is Revelation chapter 3 and verse 20. This is Yahweh Shah uh, talking. It says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him, and I will sup with him, and he with me. So basically. Yeah, I was not gonna be knocking on your door. That's what I was talking about. A clean spirit may come to you. And you gotta be able to understand, like, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna use this for my good. I'm gonna try to get in the spirit. When you fast, you need to try to get in the spirit. Like, you know, boom, okay. First off, I wanna get rid of these bands of wickedness. I want I wanna let go of these unclean spirits that's on me. Cause I know it's on me. I know what's been going on. I haven't been meditating on what I need to be meditating on. So now that's when you pray, you pray about that. While you fast and you pray about that. Okay. Lord, handle this for me. Bob Kasha. So lucky if I did anything, please, you know, help me. That's when you make supplication. And then that's when you deal in the scriptures. You go find the answer to get rid of that, get rid of that demon. Now a clean spirit is supping with you. Now a clean spirit, like Yahweh Shah said, he knock on that door, open up that he may come unto you, that he may sup with you. Now y'all eating. That's what that's what sup mean. Now y'all eating, y'all eating the spiritual bread. Your spirit can't live if you don't give it no food. Same way with your flesh. You got to give it this, this this spiritual food. You got to let it eat. You know, you cutting you cutting off um, you cutting the wicked off from what it want. The wicked it want the lust of that food, the flesh food. It want the lust of that. You can fast from from food. You can fast from from anything that that you see is fit. That's probably wicked. That's going on in your life. You can fast from the game. You can fast from TV. Like, no, nah, I, mean, I don't need to touch that. I don't need to deal with that. Obviously, that's an unclean spirit. I don't need to be messing with that. Now you're letting that clean spirit in you. Now you're actually dealing. Now you figured out a breakdown. You didn't know You didn't know what was going on. Like, man, I've been meditating on that for weeks. Finally got it. All praises. You got to figure out 
how to see these unclean spirits and deal with them. Cause we not we not given um this lot that we got. This ain't an easy lot. This ain't something that's just you know. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna just chill, and then I'm gonna get the kingdom. No, that's not how it work. You gotta put in work. You gotta actually be able to endure, it. like the uh, like the brothers just did a video over. You gotta be able to endure. It. But this is Sirach chapter two and verse one it says, "My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation." It says, "Set thy heart aright and constantly endure." And make not haste in the time of trouble. It says you gotta, you gotta um, prepare thy soul for temptation, because the unclean spirits is coming with temptation. Best believe they're coming deep. They pulling up deep. Oh yeah, he he trying to get down the truth. All right, let's see if that righteous seed is gonna, you know, let's see if it's gonna prevail over this seed that we finna plant in them. Let's see, you know, do he wanna read, or do he really wanna watch the game? You know, do he want to study? Or do I, I feel like he kind of want to play the game. I don't think he want to study. I think he want to play the game. That's what them unclean, unclean spirits is coming with. But like I was saying earlier, our lot, our lot is not just some easy walk. And I'm going to get it. This is 2nd Ezra chapter 7 and verse 6. It says, there's also another thing. A city built it and set upon a broad field and is full of all good things. So it's a city. It's to go into the uh, kingdom of heaven. City, broad field, filled with all good things. Things you can't even imagine. Verse 7 says, The entrance thereof is narrow and is set in a dangerous place to fall. Like as if there were a fire on the right hand and on the left hand a deep water. So on the way to this city, to this broad city, it's a narrow passage. Left hand, fire, right hand, deep water. You you know, you tipping the scales, you you know, you're trying to remain balanced. That's you letting that you trying to keep your righteous seed going, like, oh man, you know, I gotta stay on track. But if a wicked seed come through, you know, what the uh scriptures say. Um, if you walk in darkness, you're gonna stumble. You can't walk in darkness, because then you're gonna stumble on that narrow passage. You don't wanna stumble on that passage, because if you stumble, you may fall into the water, you dead. Or if you stumble, you may fall into the fire dead you can't stumble you got to walk in light so you can see the passage so you can see the narrow uh the narrow bridge and keep straight and get to that city verse um verse eight it says and one only path between them both even between the fire and water so small that there could but one man go there at once so this bridge is so small it's only one man that could walk this passage you can't be so the shoulder with your buddy you know, y'all both, you know, on the bridge. It, no, that's our lot. It is so narrow. It's so hard. But we got to do it. Ain't no other choice. We got to do it. It says, if this city now were given unto a man for an inheritance, if he never shall pass the danger set before it, how shall he receive this inheritance? So if you got your inheritance, but you can't go through this danger, this little affliction, how you going to receive it? You know, you walk in it, you, you, you scared to walk it because you see a demon. You see some temptation right there. Like, oh, man, I don't think I can get that. I don't think I can get through that. I don't think I can. I don't know. That's a big demon. When the scriptures say I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. Philippians 4 and 13. We can get through it. It says set thy soul to endure temptation. You got to be able to endure that. Don't fall into temptation. Uh, Rebuke it. Get out of here, Satan. Get out of here, demon. I don't want to deal with you. I'm trying to deal with the scriptures. I'm not, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't get down with that. I'm not trying to get in darkness so I stumble. Next thing you know, I'm in some fire. Let's keep reading though. Verse 10. And said I, it is so, Lord. Then said he unto me, even so also is Israel's portion. This is our portion. We got to walk this bridge. We got to be able to handle and deal with these unclean spirits. Ain't no way around it. You have to deal with them. You got to. They just place you to, to try to make you fall. Are they going to make you fall? That's on you. That's 100% on you. You got to constantly endure. Do the work. Repent. Fast. 
make supplication. Stay in the scriptures. Meditate. Meditate on the scriptures. Figure out what's going on with your nation. Help your brothers and your sisters. Help your wife out. Maybe your wife going through something. Maybe she got some heavy demons on her. Can you get those off her? And vice versa. You don't want to be throwing demons on other people. You come in with, with, with wrath and anger, and you're just throwing all that on other people. You're throwing all these spirits on other people. And then what if they can't handle it? You just offended the little ones. Now what? You know, I didn't want to make this lesson too long. So I'm going to go ahead and get this uh, closing scripture. Lord willing, somebody was edified. It's all right, chapter 43 and verse 30. It says, when you glorify the Lord, exalt him as much as you can, for even yet will he far exceed. And when you exalt him, put forth all your strength, and be not weary, for you can never go far enough. And with that, I want to call Allah Yahweh, by the Shem of Mashiach Yahweh Shah. I want to say, um, Shalom, my middle, you know, Shalom, my brah.